Right, it happened. <laughs> Something happened. Something's gone wrong. The whole brook is in pieces. I've took the opportunity to clean up the travel lock rail, which will allow me to use the two travel locks, one behind and one in front of the saddle carriage, whatever. It's the basic carriage locks, carriage lock stops, and they weren't very smooth. When I got the lathe, this thing was just a piece of rust and well I've just deburred it and scotch brighted it and made it a lot better. Now I'm gonna do a little bit to the feed shaft, this one here, just rotating now is the feed shaft. It works perfectly fine as it is but I'm gonna make it look a bit more pretty. It's a time to get some more chips out of it as well. It's got a few chips in it. The feed screw, the bearing block here, wasn't getting any lubrication, the top oiler, so I've caught, the top oiler is blocked, uh, I've caught that just in time, so this is what's happened, the rear bearing has got some play in it, what I noticed was I was getting some chatter, I don't usually get chatter when I'm parting with a carbide in 4140. This is EN19T. You usually just part that straight off, not a problem. And it started chattering. It was out here. And I moved it back in close to the chuck. Put the carriage stop on, locked the compound off, did loads of stuff and it was still chattering. And then I got this. Let me put you in the holder. And you can see that. By the way, this unit here, that's the reversing gearbox, an engagement gearbox. So I bet you can hear that. So the way I stopped that was, oh, let me see if I can zoom out. Let's just spin everything around so it works. I'll try and stay out of the way. So I'm grabbing on the end here, and you can hear the knocking. When I pull on that, it all goes away. And I can make the knocking happen here as well. But it's a lot harder to make the knocking happen at the front. You can't grab it here and do it very hard, you have to get a lot of leverage to do it, whereas here I can finish straight away now I've got one and a half foul of play here and I know it's at the back it's got to be at the back so I'm a bit annoyed I'm very annoyed as you can well imagine I had the cap off last night looking inside and I couldn't really see it a lot but I am at a loss of what to do complete loss oh my good night oh my good night OMG got the spindle out spindle was a very weird weird thing it has a locking knot which goes here and the locking knot holds this item here on which is in two pieces this is the drive gear and that goes upon the shaft for a start. Then we have the back gear assembly and this is shiftable and keyed. So this is floating unit but this bit is not floating. This bit is inside the headstock and you don't need to take that off. 
that's a bearing protector. I don't think you need to take that off. You might not need to take that off. That keeps the oil in the bearings. And there's another one on the outside and that just gives you a reservoir of oil for, for the bearings to play with. Okay, so these two bits were bolted together. And I'll line it up. These two bits were bolted together and you had to take the bolts out and separate it and in between that was that lock nut, which was very strange. As soon as that lock nut, putting the pretension onto the annular contact bearings was released, the whole shaft just came out with the rear nut disengaged. All well and good, all well and good, but there is a problem. Severe problem. This locking ring arrangement here is also in here. Now I've got this unit out. I'll bring you in a bit, a bit closer and show you. So I've gone handheld because me. Camera's undoing. Although I can make it so it doesn't undo. Maybe. Anyway, this unit here is in one and it's held in by a, a bearing cap. And this is the bearing cap which goes over it. There's a bearing cap there. So when you open the casing up, it looks like that. You take that off. Alright, fair enough. Here we go. One and the other. No, no. You take that off and you think, wow, I can see the belts. I'm going to be able to change these belts that easy. But no, that is not the case. So the problem I'm having is this back plate here has clearly been glued on with what looks like red hermitite. Looks like they've used red hermitite everywhere to seal this up. And what I believe needs to happen is, is this back cover come off, pull this bearing out, and then undo that nut from inside there. Basically, if I get it so you can see it, there we go, you can see it inside there now, just there. So inside there there's a flat blade. So you can see the screwdriver in there, probably, I don't know, can't really see, it's a small string on the, on the handy cam thing. Once you've unlocked that pinch bolt, then I have a piece of steel here somewhere, the right diameter, it's 4.75mm, here we go, that I can just put into it and then use as a handle to undo it. But. It ain't happening in there. Now I might, after I've got through the stress that I'm having, <laughs> take that uh, screw screw out and then try and undo that nut and try and pull the shaft out to get the pulley off. Now at this point in time, I think I'm going to change that for a cam belt pulley. Because you can see how much oil's on it and oil is just going to get in from everywhere into there unless you seal it in with Hermitite Red which is what they do now I'm, I'm pretty certain I'm capable of doing that but path the course I'll see what kind of seals there are in there I can't see if there's rubber seals in there there might be rubber seals in there and in there path the course I still think it's going to leak. It's English, and English things leak. Doesn't matter. You know, you get oil on your lathe; it protects it. But we all know from the old days of the original Triumphs, they all leaked, and BSAs they all leaked. And when the Japanese came out with motorcycles, they didn't leak. <laughs> we were good at making things leak. Uh, 
anyway, getting away from the leaking, I can't get the back gear out, which is down there, without getting this out. I have tried all different ways. I've got the shaft out for the back gear and got the bearing out, which came up really easily. And yes, the bearing is is buggered. It's completely had it. And the gear doesn't look too bad. So I'm quite happy at that. I'm going to have to replace the gear. I still wouldn't mind changing this for a cam belt pulley because that would be a whole lot better. No slipping belts. I'll be able to keep it in high, high range all the time. And it won't cause all these problems, which I think when everything in back here was putting loads of pressure where it shouldn't be instead of having a direct spindle. Because when this is linked directly, basically this cog here and this bearing here link onto that there which is directly linked to that <laughs> and key to that there's a key there's a key in there yeah so it's key to that so this like this assembly is keyed to that so this that whole unit slides onto that and direct drives it when that unit slides off that, this is free to rotate, so that's called free, free, spindle free. And then you bring back gear across, and the back gear then lines up with this gear here, which was driving the spindle, and then transmits it by reducing it that amount from about 45 down to around about 20. So off the speed range or something like that and then goes into that massive gear there and then quarters it or something like that so it probably reduces the speed by eight times while looking at that I haven't worked it out I'm just guessing and then that little gear is what transmits the drive so this little bearing collapsed it dropped down by a millimeter which allowed that enough space to start every now and again I can't get it out to show you at the moment, but I'm getting there. I'm going to go on the internet now and read how to break down red hermitite to try and separate this back housing out. Uh, so that's where I'm at. I'm not very happy about all this. I'm extremely unhappy. I thought when when I started using just direct drive and forgetting about back gear I'll be right. I'll get through I won't have to use the mini lathe and then I start getting the chatter and I am well annoyed now so I need to bag this lot up now put uh, plastic all over this lot to stop any uh, grunge and grime getting onto it as you can see, to get the headstock to pieces, I've got to take the gearbox off. To take the gearbox off, I've had to take all the feed shafts to pieces. And that was not a bad thing. It all happened just right. I've been pretty lucky because this rear bearing here was very tight. Very tight indeed. Here's the bearing block. I can take that off for a time being. I think I can remember where that went. <laughs> There's a lot of parts floating around now. And here is the beer bearing block and it wasn't doing that. So I, I got it out by using the saddle to push it out. So I engaged the half nut and pushed it out, taking the bearing to pieces at the end there. And it was very tight. I just sprayed some oil into the bronze bush. It soaked it up and it's free as anything. I don't do anything to it, just put oil in it and let it soak in, and that was it. So we're back in business there, and I'm gonna have to sort out that oiler. That oiler is not allowing oil through. And I've been meaning to do these oilers since I first had the lathe. All of these, I don't like these little things where you're just squirting. I want a reservoir there, 
the reservoir there and I want it to fill it up and let it just drain in and piss out everywhere <laughs> basically it doesn't matter to me and then that will go into the cutting oil I do collect all the oil all the oil that doesn't get soaked up by you can see down here there's gravy granules which catch everything that goes inside the lathe same at the back there that stops it leaking through the bolt holes but at the back here it all drains down here and I catch it in three pots cutting oil and whey oil and motor oil all get caught down there and then I use it for cutting oil I reuse I just fill that pot up and that is what I use for that and then this one here it's obviously it says cutting oil on it that doesn't usually live there but it's up there for the time being and this one's got whey oil in it slide whey oil and that one's got motor bearing oil in it as you can see and yes, I just used my, that's, this is a good example actually. Uh, that's how good the old grinder was. You had to dab at it and really take your time. Can you see the SAE 30 there, it says there? SAE 30 plus molly slip. And above it, it says motor bearing really clearly. <laughs> because I just get in and grind with a, with a new grinder. It is way better. It does what it's supposed to do. Very happy with that. Very unhappy with this mess. And I put two extra gib adjusters in, and then another lock in the centre, I think, just so it's got places where it's to lock. It's just not, there's not enough space on this thing here, and enough rigidity to be able to take locks. Only one lock stop, so I think two, one there, one there, and then one there, one there working together would be good and I'm definitely going to need to figure out quickly how to do a carriage stop for it because you don't going to stop this at the carriage shop but I just make a quick carriage stop as well while I'm at it.